On January 30, 1933, Adolf Hitler became Germany's chancellor and began reshaping Germany in his own image. Hitler's new policies included systemic persecution of various ethnic groups, especially Jewish people. The United States wouldn't formally declare war against Nazi Germany for nearly nine years. Meanwhile, Hitler's agenda created legal battles in the United States, as illustrated in the 1938 case of Holze v. Deutsche Reichsbahn Gesellschaft. Marcel Holze, a Jewish man of German residence and citizenship, entered an employment contract with a German transportation company called Deutsche Reichsbahn Gesellschaft, or Deutsche. German law governed the contract. Per the contract, Holzer would work for Deutsche for three years, beginning in January of 1932. The contract provided, among other things, that if Holzer died, or through no fault of his own, were unable to work, then Deutsche would pay Holzer or his heirs 120,000 German marks. The contract was made in Germany, where it was to be performed. In April of 1933, Hitler's government incarcerated Holzer in a concentration camp, where Holzer remained for about six months. Holzer's incarceration was part of a broader policy to eliminate Jewish people, among others, from prominent positions in industry, commerce, and transportation. Obeying that same policy, Deutsche terminated Holzer's employment. After being released from the concentration camp and moving to the United States, Holze sued Deutsche in New York State Court, seeking at least $50,000 in damages. The first count of Holze's complaint asserted that the termination of his employment, on the sole grounds that he was a Jew, entitled him to damages. The second count invoked Holze's contract with Deutsche. Namely, Holze became unable, through no fault of his own, to work for Deutsche when the Nazis locked him away. Thus, the contract entitled Holze to payment. Deutsche's main defense was that in terminating Holze's employment, it simply obeyed German law. Holze moved the trial court to strike that defense. The trial court granted Holze's motion, and the New York Supreme Court Appellate Division affirmed. Having done so, the Appellate Division asked the New York Court of Appeals, New York's highest court, to decide whether Holze's complaint stated a claim and whether Deutsche's defense was facially good. The Court of Appeals then took up the case.